They say everything is bigger in Texas, to which I say, show me. Well, Circuit of the Americas has shown everyone in recent years that it may be the new, quote, big NASCAR road course, consistently delivering amazing races. How will the Icon Cup Series field fare at this 3.4 mile Tilkadrome? Keep watching to find out. Welcome to Pit Stop TV in the virtual Austin, Texas, ready to go racing this evening from Circuit of the Americas. My name is Andrew Cardinale IV, and it's a pleasure to join you for coverage of the 2024 Icon Cup Series. Tonight's coverage is brought to you by Whiplash Sim Cams, ATVO, and CC's Business. Race 5 is here. While NASCAR is in full swing, we're a race behind by number, but we're right with them in going to Austin, Texas for this massive 3.427 mile road course that was built specifically with Formula One in mind, which makes it that much more special that we're taking the stock cars here, not just because it's a juxtaposition, not just because it's an interesting challenge for these drivers, but because it is a big, winding, technical road course. It is not the simple kind of road course that we've seen in past years at places like Sonoma or Watkins Glen. It's a different kind of racetrack, a different kind of course that brings on different kinds of challenges and different kinds of racing. Everything about Coda is different, and that makes it that much more fun. Lap record here on iRacing is a 133.463 that I could find. That is with the not-so-current, I guess, 2022 uh, reg Formula One Mercedes. The NASCAR Cup Series is a little far off. The, the NASCAR Cup lap record uh, in qualifying at least with open setups is, as you can see there, a 210.63. Uh, these guys are close, admittedly. For, for, for fixed setup racing, these guys are pretty darn close. Vincent Loria in practice so far only a second and a half off that time at a 212.17. Enough about the track map. Let's take a look at first the schedule and the series points. The schedule on screen now. This race has been shortened slightly from 50 rate from 50 laps rather to 41 laps. We'll talk more about that later on. Uh, but race five here, right before we go to Richmond and Martinsville, a couple of short tracks in a row. Then Texas, Talladega, Dover, some bigger tracks before going and fighting the Monster Mile for race 10. Then back to some intermediates, Kansas, Darlington, Charlotte, even uh, St. Louis, Gateway. Then we go back road racing, race 15 at Sonoma. We get a couple of shorter tracks at Iowa and New Hampshire and even Nashville. It's that intermediate range, but it's a shorter intermediate, which makes it its own challenge. Then the street course at Chicago. Then some really big race tracks, Pocono, Indianapolis, Atlanta, California, we go short track racing race 24 in the summer at Richmond and back to a big scratch to set the playoff field officially for 12 playoff races. We have got cars on track wrapping up practice three minutes or so left to go in the session. But let's take a look at these point standings. They're getting more and more compelling as the season goes on, as you would imagine. And Brian Smith, clear and away, is the championship favorite as of now. Uh, definitely the best driver that we've seen so far in this series. But there is plenty of time for these guys to get warmed up and get up to speed. Brian Smith has a 31-point lead, though, over guys like Nathan Finnegan, Justin Bissonnette, and Ryan Paddy, all tied to that 31-point marker. Now, Nathan Finnegan, in the league point link, is technically displayed in third. He's got that race win, though, so in terms of playoffs... He is ahead of Jason Bissonette, Ryan Patty, and then you would technically have Timothy Harper and Michael Milfeld Jr. slotting into third and fourth. We'll start to work towards the playoff conversation, but for now, you see where that cutoff line is to kind of visualize things right between Brock Hersey and Anthony Campbell. And that is the zone that I think we'll talk about the most until we get to race 26 at Daytona and begin the playoffs. Then it shifts, of course, to 12th and 13th, then up to 8th and 9th then up to fourth and fifth, and finally that final four for the final three races of the season. Another little dynamic to keep an eye on here in the point standings is the different pockets of drivers, and I think we'll see the same thing on the racetrack this evening, interestingly, uh, but pockets of drivers in different groups in the point standings. There's Brian Smith on his own top echelon up there, uh, but then you have 
kind of the, the next best bunch that is starting to win these races and rack up these points when Brian Smith has any kind of issue. Uh, we saw it the last two weeks at Phoenix and Bristol. Finnegan came through at Phoenix, Harper at Bristol, and that's why those two have wins out of that kind of next best category, even though Brian Smith is absolutely spanking these guys on ovals at least, and he's doing the same here on a road course, just a little bit slower than Vincent Loria. He's just got speed, but it takes a full race to get to victory lane, and unfortunately, no fault of his own last week, Brian Smith has had a couple of things pop up and take him out of the running, and really no fault of his own at Phoenix either. It's just, it's been those kinds of weeks for him. Let's see if this gets him back to his winning ways, though. Uh, maybe on a road course. And, you know, guys that are on the cusp of winning, I think, have to include certainly the 06 and 30, Bissonnette and Patty. But also, I, I would say guys like Jacob Gladulich could absolutely go up there and steal a race here soon. Uh, Zach Lockett, for sure. And we're kind of just waiting for Vincent Loria and Cody Neal to put a race together and not have something random happen to them and keep them from victory lane. I think those two cars in particular, those two drivers, are knocking on the door. Even Justin Michael, I think, is a really big dark horse if he's able to start making these races and go for a full championship campaign uh, I, I really have to imagine that the 87 car just might be one of the best in the field if he could just run full time and it seems like uh, that might not be the case for car 87 this season well, enough about point standings. That just took about three minutes. We do want to talk about Whiplash and Cam's race details while practice wraps up. Uh, 41 lap race, 9, 9, and 23 for stage length. So uh, no pit stops, at least under green, until that final stage. Um, five change sets, no fast fix, incident penalty, none tonight. Uh, giving these guys the full racetrack to work with. If it's great, it's okay. And that 60% fuel load gives us about... Really, I'm going to say 13 laps is the bottom of the pit window. If you save, if you maybe are able to use some caution laps, I think you might be able to get up to 16, maybe 17. So you just might be able to stretch the first two stages on the same tank of fuel. But that is going to be tough, really, really tough. And you're going to have to be very, very disciplined in saving fuel to save that pit stop. Even so, I'm just not sure what it will or will not give these drivers if they actually choose to do that. It would be a big challenge and uh, might set them back, but it's an option. I, I think it's very much a viable option to run the stages without pitting and only pit at the end of stage two. Then again, in between stage two and the end of the race, you could also alternatively um, pit at the first stage break, run stage two, and then pit just shortly into stage three, and I think you'll save a pit stop there as well. So uh, a couple of options that I think we'll have to, to watch. I would say strategy one, pit at the end of stage one, pit at the end of stage two, and then pit again during stage three. Strategy two is going to be to run the stages without pitting and pit at the end of stage two, then pit again in, in the middle of stage three. Strategy number three, will be to run stage one, pit, run stage two, and then stay out after stage two and keep that track position up front and then just pit earlier in stage three and run to the end. You only have to get, let's see, well, nine and 23, right? That's 32 laps. So that 14 to 16 number with a caution in the middle, I think that's absolutely attainable for these guys um, to run 32 total laps on a tank of fuel, well, on two tanks of fuel, I guess, with a caution in between. And those will be the only cautions that we see during the stage breaks. We won't see any other cautions thrown unless there's some crazy circumstance that I'm not aware of. Um, so th those are your opportunities. And I think that's certainly, well, I know that's certainly going to shape the strategy options for this race. Getting down to it, though, obviously, welcome, everybody, to uh, the Virtual Circuit of the Americas, and enough of my rambling, we can actually get cars on screen for the first time this evening, and while we do so, it'll be very much worthwhile to take a look at the weather conditions this evening. 80.3 degrees in the air, 111 on track, it's a warm, warm Austin, Texas day. We'll turn the music down and let the engines come to life as cars are on track for qualifying and beginning to, well, I'd say beginning to run their times, but nobody has made it back to the start finish line just yet. This guy, though, might be the first. Hello, Kyle Purcell to a, yes, he is the first to begin a flying lap. 
Everybody has to get on track quick here if you want to get a qu uh, qualifying lap in, if you want to get two in especially. Some rear lockup there. That's interesting. Rear lockup for Purcell in turn one. We'll keep an eye on lockup throughout the course of the day. Thomas Taylor across the line. And Nathan Brzezowski. I... <laughs> All right, bother, bother myself with uh, his last name pronunciation at some point. Here's Ryan Paddy, though, in a brand new paint scheme. Running through the S's. Mike Jennings on track in a new paint scheme there as well. Adam Ball this evening, same old number 19 car that we know and love. Eric Smith in his usual paint scheme. And how about a new one for Anthony Tezeo here in car number 15? A new paint on that Ford as he's been getting more and more creative with the paint schemes uh, on his car. Same old, same old, freaky fast. Jimmy Johns, number four for Cody Neal. Jacob Smith, a newcomer to the series. He will make his first Icon Cup Series start this evening here at Coda. Daniel Nyman back in car 51. He's here. Brian Smith, a new paint scheme, a new sponsor for the 78 car this evening, debuting here at Coda. His Land Cruiser Heritage Museum in Salt Lake City, Utah. I wonder if Brian, I mean, he's got the Michigan Club next to his name, but I wonder if maybe he's in uh, Utah now. I've got some family out that way. Really do love uh, the Salt Lake City area. Here's Vincent Loria. I, I think those two, the 78 and 67, will be the biggest competition during this race. Michael Milfelt Jr. in the 155. He's the Daytona race winner. And we'll be saying that all season long. For 36 races, we'll call this guy a Daytona race winner. Jacob Gladulich in car 14. Anthony Campbell, of course, in his subway, number 73. Nathan Finnegan across the line to begin lap one. Of course, he's got the recent win out at Phoenix. Here's Charlie Widener, I think, on the cusp of a win. Kyle Corley out there in car 88. Sean Purcell had some trouble in practice. We'll see if he can turn it around in the race. Brock Hersey in the 24. And our most recent race winner about to wrap up lap one, it looks like. Timothy Harper actually just began his first lap. Cameron Thompson here in car number seven. Same paint scheme as we've come to expect. Robert Dials. Joshua Clemens. New paint scheme for the 44 car. Jameson Havlin, same old, same old. And Luke Rakowski in the 33. You're seeing these times roll in. Vincent Loria, the fastest so far in car 67. We go on board. And he has got just over a tenth back to Brian Smith. So, <clears throat> excuse me, if you watch the best times on the left side of the screen, you'll get an idea of who's quick and maybe who's not. Jacob Smith, pretty quick. He's third so far in qualifying. Of course, very early in the session still. Brian Smith is, let's see, is this down to turn 11, it looks like. It is. And they're catching some shade. Everybody's on the racetrack for this shade. This is going to be important, I think, of who is on their money lap. I'd imagine their money lap is going to be lap two. If you're on lap two now, tires up to temperature, get that bit of shade from a good part of the track, I think that's going to help you out. I mean, if... Look at the scenic blimp, even. Uh, there is plenty of shade to go around. Michael Milfeld Jr., pretty decent so far on a road course. He's fifth quick. Kyle Purcell chiming in, sixth quick, a 216. And these guys were pushing all week long to try and get south of a 216. Really, even some of them trying to get south of a 217. Myself, uh, I ran a few laps in the test Test drive option here in the session. I was actually able to, to follow Nathan Finnegan around and run down to about a high 215, uh, but it's not easy. It is not easy at all. This car is a handful here, and, and trying to nail things and, and get a perfect lap is very, very difficult, especially trying to use the curb just the right way, and we'll talk about that, I'm sure, the rest of the evening as well. But Brian Smith out of turn 20 to complete lap number two in his qualifying effort. It's slower and he will not pick anything up. Gloria now in a turn 20 as well. Final opportunity to pick something up here. Oh, he's going to improve. A 213.39 going to solidify his provisional pole for the time being. That lap did not stand. He must have picked up an off track. Jacob Smith. Let's see what driver 21 has. Faster that lap, will it stand or did he get an off track? It's 214-533, it will stand. 
And it's at least a better lap while staying in the third position. There's our most recent race winner in the series, Timothy Harper. Cody Neal up to third position. Big lap out of car four. He's going to match his teammate up front. Sean Purcell on track, and he will pull over. He's done. Brock Hersey get a wrap up. Thomas Taylor currently on track, about 12 seconds off of pole. And I, I mentioned we're going to see some pockets of drivers, some who are competitive, some who are frankly not, unfortunately. Um, and they're going to be in their own little pockets, their own little battles. And Taylor's going to be in one of the lower pockets, I think, as he's actually wrapped up his qualifying run. He's going for extra laps here with a minute 45 to go. But I noticed in practice there is a large number of drivers who just are kind of, well, they're they're competitive. I think the top 15 in practice were pretty, pretty competitive. Within a few seconds of uh, the fastest drivers, then it dropped off by a couple of seconds back to the 220s, and that's where things kind of really took shape in the midfield. Then you have a few guys that are a little further back, the higher 220s, even a few 230s that are just trying to come to grips with this racetrack, and. I, I think we're going to see those groups very much be evident uh, during the race. Finnegan, fourth quick. Big lap there for car six. Start towards the front. And track position is everything. Absolutely everything for these guys. This qualifying session, very, very important across the board. On board with Kevin Gunther, behind the wheel, behind the helmet. Car 31 coming around turns 18, now 19. And he'll have an opportunity here to go for, I had to guess, about a top 10 lap time. A 212 coming around turn 20 on the power. Going to drive to the line, and it's a short run to the line as well. A 217.851. It's not top 10. But it is 12th quick, which is not too bad there for car 31. Jameson Haviland would like to do what his favorite driver did yesterday, the NASCAR Xfinity Series race, and go for the top step. Got to start with qualifying, though, and so far Haviland down at a 228.6, and qualifying will wrap. A few drivers not able to turn lap times in the back, and uh, looking across the field, it looks like 31 cars in all. Ready to go racing at Circuit of the Americas. So that car count changing a little bit. I think the track certainly affecting it to a point. As we take a look here again at our Whiplash Simcams race details. The, the biggest thing, again, is going to be that incident penalty and the stage lengths. Along with that uh, fuel percentage. Now these guys won't take many tires. In fact, it might be faster not to take tires at all in the first two stages. Really, this race is going to come down to fuel uh, fuel mileage. Enough about all of the details going into it. Let's get down and meet our 31 drivers this evening for race number five of the series. Vincent Loria on pole alongside Brian Smith and the two fastest drivers week in, week out on the front row, along with the next two fastest drivers, Cody Neal and Nathan Finnegan, these guys up front proving just how versatile they are, along with a brand new part-timer making his first start in the series ever. It's Jacob Smith in car 21. Ryan Patty rolls off from the sixth spot on the CC's business starting grid. Seventh and eighth, Kyle Purcell and Michael Milfelt Jr., Daytona race winner. Bristol race winner, Timothy Harper from the ninth spot. Joshua Clemens makes a top 10 appearance here on the grid. And, well, <laughs> I, I I still, Urzazowski? <laughs> Nathan, I'm, I'm going to have to get clarification at some point. I, I wish I had a, a better pronunciation. You know what's funny? Uh, I work in a pharmacy. I don't know that I can pronounce his last name, but I can pronounce uh, Levitaracetam, which is, well, it's generic Keppra, and it is a seizure medicine, and I feel like I might need that if I try to pronounce his last name a few too many times. I, it's, that's, 
that's a a big one for sure. Kevin got the the rolls off from the twelfth position. Starting thirteenth, you'll find car ninety five. Charlie Widener out of ball rolls off from the fourteenth spot. Continuing on here, in the top twenty: Mike Jennings, Sean Purcell. I'm out, guys. Back here in seventeenth, eighteenth. Uh, Jacob Gladulich in a, a really cool starting spot actually for Daniel Nyman. He's had some troubles early in the season. We'll see if he can use eighteenth to go forward. Then it's James and Havland and Anthony Teseo back here to complete your top twenty, and the rest will roll by on your screen. 41 laps about to get started here from the Circuit of the Americas in the virtual Austin, Texas. It is a pleasure as always. A big thank you to our partners here with the channel with Flash Simcams, ATVO, and CC's Business. Some good shots around the racetrack. We'll have some pretty cool ones, I think, through the course of the day. Really cool. Perspectives, cameras, and such. This is one of them through the carousel section just outside of the stadium. We've got one from that big tower just above that carousel section. Yeah, we've got cameras all over the place. Really cool ones. It's going to be a fun race to watch at the very least. And hey, if you get tired of my voice, you can always just turn the cameras on and uh, mute the audio. We've got some drivers making contact. While we have an opportunity, let's go through some onboard cameras with Ryan Patty. Here's one of them looking back on the left side. We've got one from the spoiler. Got one from the rear of the roof, got one inside the car, and plenty more. From a fan's perspective, drivers out of the final corner, about to go racing. 41 laps in the Icon Cup Series at Circuit of the Americas begins now. A big start for Cody Neal, already to the inside of his teammate, everybody else clamoring through turn one. A bit of contact for the back for some drivers, but our race leader single file, Brian Smith out sideways at the bottom of turn two, into the S's for the first time. Such a difficult place to go racing. These guys making it look easy here at the start. Right at the inside of turn nine, great perspective of everybody trying to use all the racetrack here as they begin this long 41 lap race. And now down to turn 11, big move here, Jacob Smith, a big send to the inside of Cody Neal. It'll stick, but he won't make the pass. He'll drop back into fourth position, Brian Smith, Vincent Loria spreading out further back. Oh, contact there, and Mike Jennings goes around, Sean Purcell just straight line him. The 16 gets turned back around, and, uh, well, he's already had a rough season to get going. That's not going to make him any happier. Smith, deep into turn 12, nearly gets Cody Neal the second time. Two corners in a row nearly got into that four car. Brian Smith, Vincent Loria, front of the field. Nathan Finnegan, Ryan Patty, they check in just behind. Michael Milfelt Jr. and others, and... Oh, cars slow, three wide back here, Tanner Dio, Mike Jennings, and more. One car did not make the start of this race. Robert Diles then is currently at the back end of the field. And it looks like Eric Smith is the one driver not making the start. Cameron Thompson turned around with Anthony to say, oh, Kyle Corley goes for a spin. Tanner Dio checks up. The leaders, though, lap one about to be complete, this time by out of turn number 20. One of the battles in the racetrack as they round the final corner are Kevin Gunther and Charlie Widener. This for position number 12. One of the only battles in the racetrack. These two even aren't battling too heavily as Lukakowski is around out of turn... Not turn one. That's turn 19, it looks like, just before pit in. And he will drop back to 30th position of 30. A side-by-side -side here. Cody Eldred now is slow. A side-by-side, -side, though, for Tanner Dio and Kyle Corley. They get it sorted. Oh, Corley, maybe not. Oh, that was scary. He'll go wide at turn one. Oh, contact, and Michael Milfelt goes for a spin. And these road course ringers punishing some of the regulars early. 
Jacob Smith back on Cody Neal. This down side by side to turn 11. Neal inside. Smith outside. Going to try the crossover. It's not going to happen there. And Milfeld Jr. is going to drop all the way to 14th position. It was a bit late. We'll watch this through, though. And that is down at turn seven. If we can get a uh, decent perspective here from the blimp or even from a TV camera. So watch the 155. He's driver's right. Brzezowski to the inside. Or I know it's not correct pronunciation, but that's tough. There's a couple of ways to look at that, in my opinion. And in my road racing experience, I would have to say I think driver 77 is probably at the at fault here. He's going up the inside somewhere that, yes, he's got position, but it's making a low percentage move when a driver's already committed to their line. I think Milfelt could have moved off his line and changed things up, uh, but it would have been difficult as we've got a problem for our pole sitter. Loria made a mistake that lap. He's back to seventh spot. And that puts Brian Smith out front of Cody Neal for the race lead. And let's find where Loria had a mistake. It's going to come down here in the turn 12, 13 area. He just can't get away from these issues. Turn 12 here. And Brian Smith actually turns in and just, again, that's a driver's committed, and that's a low percentage place to be. Brian Smith tips the 67 car around. When the leading driver is committed, the passing driver is just not able to move to the inside there. That's something I think some of these guys will have to work through some growing pains of early, as we've already seen a couple of incidents coming out that way. And now through the very fast turn 10. That might be one of the hardest places to hang on to the race car. Kyle Purcell here going to work on Nathan. And the 77 will successfully defend for now. Up front, though, nose to tail, three cars in a line. Brian Smith, Cody Neal, and that is Jacob Smith in the 21 car just behind, who's going to poke now to the inside and at least just gets in the mirror there of the four car. Cody Neal, though, wish-washy on the brakes. He'll hang on to the spot. Smith now to the inside here as we enter the stadium section, trying to push on through and find something. Here's the fan cam from atop that big tower at the amphitheater. Smith is getting real aggressive. And he's going to have inside position here on the four car. And he'll take the oh, contact. They're going to go way out outside of the racetrack. And... Cody Neal was trying to race for the race lead act. I mean, he was pulling up on Brian Smith. Both of these drivers, I think, are faster, or at least were faster for a moment than the 78 car. And Neal almost uses the bumper there in turn 20. And that, of course, allowed Finnegan to go on through. Now Ryan Paddy's got a mirror full of the 67 car, Vincent Loria. love every bit of those rumble curves and there's a move now from smith on finnegan i mean he is just getting aggressive with these guys a big midfield pack is starting to blossom this is going to be charlie widener down through mike jennings Widener in 14th, Thomas Taylor there in 15th, then Jameson Haviland, Jacob Gladulich, and Mike Jennings. Some drivers that are in some precarious positions, such as Mike Jennings, who I think certainly is better than he's running currently. They got knocked back there out of contact, and here we go, down to turn 11. Cody Neal looks to the inside of Jacob Smith, and now we'll look outside, try to get a crossover here out of 11. Beautiful setup there from driver number four. That was textbook stuff. And he's going to have the inside all the way down to turn 12. Look how close these two are. Hard of the brakes. Neil goes on through. 
Now, though, he's going to have to try and protect that from Jacob Smith. And there goes Finnegan off the racetrack. He's going to lose second spot. Neil going to take it back over. And Finnegan drops back into the fourth position. There goes Smith sideways. He just hangs on to it. Ryan Patty losing that spot to Loria now drops him back out of the stage points. Of course, as we learned last week at Bristol, only the top five get stage points in the Icon Cup Series. Making these positions, I think, that much more valuable up out front. I think realistically anything in the top ten is valuable in the NASCAR Cup Series, but when you reduce the amount of positions that pay points for the stage, it just gets that much more difficult, that much more valuable to finish in those stage points. Joshua Clemens now, fastest lap. And what's going to be interesting about that new fastest lap every time you see it, these guys up front are running faster, but they are collecting off tracks. And the off tracks will invalidate those lap times and they will not count for that new fastest lap notification. I mean, look at these guys all off the racetrack there out of turn 20 in this big gaggle towards the back half of the field. Haviland leading in that Kyle Larson lookalike. Then the side-by-side -side of Adam Ball and Charlie Widener as they head down to turn number one. Widener in the 95, Ball in the 19. That's Thomas Taylor in the 57 car and Gladulich in the 14. Mike Jennings has gone past these guys, is now squarely in the 14th spot, all on his own. And back to this group. My, oh my, how fun they've been to watch. He'll work down the back stretch. Beautiful opportunity here for Nathan Finnegan. He gets blocked though all the way down to the inside of the corner by the 21 car. And here comes Vincent Loria now, an opportunity to try to get by all these guys. Remember Loria, the pole sitter, he was ahead of him, got turned around by the 78. Smith all kinds of loose and a big shot there from Loria moving him out of the way. Didn't do a whole lot, though. He's going to have to try that again. And, oh, he's going to completely move the 21. Whoa. I mean, he dunked him. Wow. I'm going to confirm that my eyes are not uh, deceiving me. That is... That is significant. Sixty-seven. Huh. I'm a little bit confused. I, I'm I'm not gonna lie here. I mean, Vincent Lori has just driven back into the top five, back into stage points. He could easily go up and get second on his own. Well, at first it looked like the, the, the 67 corrected, and I'm, I'm going to go and, and show the driver's hands here. My first, my first, I guess, look at this, I, I thought I saw the 67 correct left. I don't know if that's the case. I mean, well, he straightened a bit. I don't know. That's, <laughs> um, it certainly looks a little suspect. I don't want to outright say Loria dumped him without uh, without being absolutely sure, but it certainly looks like he dumped him. And that drops the 21 down to 7th. I don't mean to rationalize the thinking there, because you should never, ever intentionally crash somebody or, or spin somebody. But I understand the frustration from each of these drivers running for season points and specifically the drivers under that four and 67 camp. 
Uh, because Smith was getting real, real aggressive and physical with the four car. And if I was Cody Neal, I would have been very frustrated. I'm not sure I would have done that, though, if I was Loria, that's for sure. Um, and that's if it was intentional. I I'm not saying that it was. I'm not saying that it wasn't. It just, it was certainly interesting. Move here out of Finnegan. That's for second spot. And uh, these two, best racing on the racetrack. They'll keep going back and forth. Side by side, nearly even as they work up the hill at turn one. And Finnegan inside, Neil outside, was going to try and cut back underneath the six car. Opportunity not there as Jacob Smith will now undercut the stage. He'll pit here on lap seven. And this will set him up to not have to pit at the beginning of stage two. And is he going to take any fuel? Well, yeah, he's going to take fuel, of course. He's going to ask about tires, but he does take tires as well. And he's the first driver to pit with any kind of meaning. Go back to uh, what we talked about earlier, before this race started. Stage, or, well, strategy one, rather, felt like it was going to be to just run the race as is, pit at the stage breaks. Strategy two feels like it's to not pit at the end of stage one. Strategy three, to not pit at the end of stage two. That might be a strategy four. Undercut the stages and just have track position that way. Timothy Harper, car 12, won last week at Bristol, working here on the Daytona winner. Positions 10 and 11 on the racetrack. Harper's been setting some pretty decent lap times. I know he came across as setting the purple lap time fastest on the track while staying within track limits a couple of times. So the 12 car certainly has something here. He'll actually fall back a little bit now from the 155. Vincent Loria pulling up to Cody Neal. And Brian Smith, by the way, has gotten away to a five-second race lead. I don't think he's the fastest on the racetrack, but he doesn't have to be. And as he exits turn 20, he'll have just two laps to go in stage one. And there's your second, third, and fourth group. They come across the line and head up the hill. Then there's Nathan Berzazowski. <laughs> uh, Nathan Burr. I, I know I'm getting it wrong. I know I'm going to keep getting it wrong. Maybe if he goes up and wins a stage, we can uh, ask him for clarification. Spin in the back. Jacob Gladulich, Cameron Thompson, they're now side by side, leaving the side of the spin back in the stadium section. And we'll see how this happened in the first place. That was Thompson up the inside of Tanner Dio. Gladulich here just lost the spot, it looks like, to Charlie Widener. And as they work down into turn... 15. Gladulich got a bit checked up. Thompson up the inside. That was never going to work. Makes contact there. Even checks up Tanner Dio. Luke Krakowski is going to work here on Anthony Taseo. This is for 26th position. Certainly uh, oh, well outside of stage points, but a couple of drivers that are battling nonetheless. Daniel Nyman, meanwhile, racing with Hanover Fisk. That is for, oh, spin! Anthony Campbell. Hard into the inside wall. He's going to pull back across the racetrack and look at all that left front, right front damage, rather. They're getting one of the two walls. Out front, this is the picture for second, third, and fourth still. Brian Smith going to work around 19 and 20 this time by. And will take us to one lap to go in stage one. Love these fan perspectives. Racing back here, 18th and 19th, Dio and Thompson.
Thompson there on the inside in car number two. We just saw him in that incident with Gladulich, and it's going to work out, it looks like, for the two car. He's going to go up into 18th spot. Mike Jennings, Sean Purcell, Adam Ball. Jennings, the loser there. He's going to drop to 15th. Purcell is going to hang on to 13th. Adam Ball now in the 14th spot as Timothy Harper and Michael Milfelt Jr. start to race. This, at least, inside the top 10. Harper going to look to the inside here of Milfelt. That wasn't going to happen, but he closes in. And while these two race to the final stage point position, I want to take a note of something on Ryan Patty's machine. Something we added at uh, Bristol a week ago, this new spoiler cam. And Ryan, I just want to say hello to you as well. Also, unfortunately, I can't tell what number is on that 30 car anymore because he made his number so much smaller than it was in the uh, League Discord. He had a massive sticker on it at first. Kind of toned it down a little bit. He's going to try and hang on to fifth spot here, and I think Nathan in the 77 will probably let him have it. Meanwhile, drivers will be collecting a few more stage points. Finnegan, Neil, Gloria, how are they going to settle this out? Regardless, they are all chasing car number 78, who works into turn 19. And now down to turn 20, and Brian Smith is going to have another stage win, another eight points to his total. Car 78 will win stage one. Behind him, it's Finnegan, Neil, and Laurie to the line. Another seven seconds back, you'll find the 30 of Ryan Patty as the caution will fly. And stage one is complete. It was all Brian Smith out front, car 78. We are going to have ample time to talk to a couple of drivers, and we'll, of course, start with our stage winner. It's going to be driver 78 out of the Smith camp. Brian and Eric both. And if we bring in our stage one winner, Brian, right back to position number one for you. A troublesome week out of Bristol a week ago, but this a big step in the right direction. How was stage one from your perspective? Oh, it was pretty good. Had a little contact with 67, but I think that was just a racing deal. So I did that pretty uneventful. It definitely eventful, though, the, the few spots behind you. How glad are you that you were no part of that, uh, the back half of stage yeah. one? Yeah, I saw a few incidents in my rear Hopefully I can keep the track position, stay out front. I'd imagine a few guys short pit that stage, so we'll see how that works. Might have to do a little passing to get back up here. I don't know if this is a uh, unfair advantage, but I can tell you that only one car pitted, a uh, short pitted, and that was Jacob Smith in the 21. Does that affect what you're going to do here at all? No, I don't think so. Um, I think as of now, the plans to attack the second stage. So hopefully, as long as I'm positioned to get the stage back. was looking over uh, tires and fuel and a few different strategy options and you can just tell me I guess if if one of these fits and you don't have to tell me which one but if one of these options fits what you're going to do here uh, because the tires are so rock hard and they work well over the course of a longer run you can either pit at every stage break and then again in stage three or you can maybe not pit at the end of this stage and carry these tires or maybe not pit at the end of stage two does one of those sound like maybe it's going to work for you we'll see i mean it is all strategy we'll see how this next stage goes like i said as long as i stay up front i'll probably be doing the exact same thing if I'm, if I'm further back in the field for whatever reason uh then maybe i could maybe throw a little strategy into it won't even tell if it's one of those uh, was them. But, Brian, good to talk to you. Uh, keeping your cards close to your chest. I like it. Best of luck here in Stage 2. Yep, thanks. And we'll move him back down with Eric Smith in Car 79, so long as I can find him. And there we go. He's actually down there with Jacob Smith. So Smith and Smith, uh, it looks like, for Outback Motorsports. 
Eric Smith departing after not starting this race, it looks like. And car 78 will pull up to the pace vehicle. More time under caution here means we can talk to more drivers. We'll grab driver number six and see how Nathan Finnegan feels here about stage one and the completion thereof. Car number six, P2. You have a race win on the season. You nearly got one at Bristol last week. You're up front again here at Coda. Uh, Nathan seems like you're on top of the world right with everybody else at the front of the field. Yeah, I no, appreciate it, Andrew. Yeah, the uh, six is pretty hooked up. That 78, though, is a rocket ship. Um, I mean, we're going to do what we can. I think, honestly, our goal is like a top five today. We we don't have the pace to hang with some of these other guys, but we'll do what we can. Keep up here as long as we can anyway. You say you don't have the pace of some of these guys. as You go second in the stage, and you kept, I think, the two <laughs> hottest shoes on the racetrack right behind you. And not just hottest shoes, hot heads maybe. What did you see that was happening around you in that stage? Yeah, they were beating, banging a little bit. Um, I mean, to kind of pull a page from Larson's book from the Xfinity race on Saturday, we kind of just bided our time and just kind of let people kind of hang it out in front of one another and just pick up the pieces. So it worked out for us to be able to kind of sneak up into second here and take the points. Uh, hopefully we can keep it. And these stages, along with these tires, not really taking much wear. And then this fuel situation, a lot to think about, a lot to uh, deal with here for, for you drivers. How big of a deal is this strategy move and what you do here under this first caution yeah i mean i think this is going to kind of determine how people run the rest of the race if people are going to take four take two you know full fuel or try to just come in halfway through the stage or what the strategy is um i mean personally we're doing we're doing four and filling so we'll see what the rest of the field does but i think our pace will be good enough to relatively maintain if we do that one idea that i had had just as the guy analyzing all of this was maybe to stay out at the end of stage two has that been a consideration um maybe to, to try and then not pit there have track position pit in stage three you know of anybody trying that uh not that we've heard from anybody but i mean it, it certainly could be a viable strategy if people got the pace for it well, Nathan, best of luck to you. By the way, the guy ahead of you, he wouldn't really tell us a whole lot about his strategy. I, I wish I could give you some kind of information here, but he kept his uh, cards close to his chest. Best of luck against him. I appreciate it. Thanks, guys. Nathan Finnegan, car number six. Move him back down with his CCR, ECR teammates. And let's see if maybe we can grab Cody Neal right before he heads to the pit lane. The driver number four, very, very fast towards the front. Couldn't quite get by the six car, though, for position number two in the stage. You Cody, know. fast again, briefly before you pit here. How's the car feel? Pretty good. It's loose. It's very loose. It's hard to keep these rear tires on it. Um, other than that, I'm liking what we got here. Quick again in stage one, but there was some extra cur curricular going on. Uh, wh what happened between you and the 21 car? Oh, that's just the good buddy, Jacob Smith. Uh, he's fast, he knows he's fast, and he's going to try and help his buddy Brian Smith, so. Well, uh, Cody, you're fast. Best of luck here. It's going to be a long one, it looks like. Yep, thanks. I think that's all we needed. That, that, uh, that fuels a little bit of the dramatic fire, I'd say, as we work into stage two here. And we're going to burn a handful of laps. I, I didn't realize just how many laps it would end up using. So this stage two is going to be rather short. It'll be interesting to see how these guys all play it. So everybody comes into the pit lane. Pit road, a busy, busy place. Vincent Loria pulls into his box. There's, oh, and he had to adjust. Brian Smith up on the jacks. Cody Neal up on the jacks. Everybody taking tires here. I'm a little bit surprised. There goes Ryan Patty down and away quickly. Brian Smith going to follow, Nathan Finnegan, Cody Neal, Kyle Purcell. Loria sinks back a handful of spots. He's still in the pit lane. And he's going to drop all the way to 12th position. A long, long pit stop there for Vincent Loria. 23 seconds in all. A few drivers still pitting. This is going to cycle the 21 to the race lead. Of course, he 
hit it at the end of stage number one and has, uh, stays out under this yellow. Let's bring in the driver making his first start of the season. Uh, Jacob, a big stage one for you there until things happened in the carousel. What happened there? Yeah, I was just uh, just getting loose there a little bit, trying to trying to hang on to the car and not you know wreck the guys in front of me, and I just got hunted in the uh, in the carousel. Didn't really know what happened, and yeah, that was that was pretty much it. I just I was kind of in shock. Definitely some very hard racing. I think that's fair to say. A little bit physical, um, including you in the four. Is that on your mind at all as you begin stage two here in a couple laps? No, the, what what happened with me in the four is I was I had the wheel totally cranked to the right, and I apologized to him. I didn't didn't mean to. You know, get together with them, and as soon as, as soon as the cars get together in this, they just you know start to just push straight. So I apologize to them. Nothing really I could do there, but definitely something on my mind. And everybody seems to be driving pretty physical, like you said. Very very physical race, and you make that pit stop there at the end of stage one. Get your tires. Now I'm sure you're saving fuel, maybe cutting the car off. Um, are you going to go for any kind of radical strategy plans here back into the race? Try to just do something different. Yeah, that's why I pit at the uh, at the end of lap six, just trying to do something different. I was kind of in the middle pack, and there was no way after I'd gotten spun that my tires were going to hold on. So just trying something different here, and going to see what happens at the end of stage two, and kind of see where we come out. Well, Jacob, good to see you on the racetrack this evening. Best of luck. Uh, going to be a whole lot of hungry guys right behind you for the restart. <laughs> Absolutely. Thanks, guys. Jacob Smith, you begin stage two, uh, right from position number one, where Brian Smith left off and already mentioned it this is a very significant caution period this is going to take us so the end of stage two will be lap 18 this caution alone is going to take us at least the end of lap 13 which means i think we'll have five green flag laps in stage two and then re-rack them restack them then we'll have 19 green flag laps i'd imagine in stage number uh, stage number three, as the 67 is going to the rear. Vincent Loria to the rear of the field. He's got a lap lead, started on pole this evening, and then got turned around by the 78. I'm not going to say there was certainly no intent between the 78 and 67. Let's grab driver 67. I hope it's not poking, uh, stoking the fire too much here. Uh, Vincent, we saw some interesting, definitely physical racing there in stage one. Now you're to the rear of the field here for the stage two restart. What's going on? Yeah, well, uh, I've been racing a couple officials this week. Uh, everyone's been going as soon as you get out of the final turn. Uh, so I didn't wait for green. I just went. Uh, our racing didn't give me a black flag, but the 78 had a problem with it. So I just decided to take the EOL now uh, just so that I can, uh, you know, have another stage to kind of sort this stuff out. And uh, I owe him some payback anyway, so I'm not too worried about it. Well, that, uh, that all aside, let, let's focus on just the competition part here. You're real fast, and you have an opportunity to go through a lot of the field here in Stage 2. How can you maybe set yourself up for Stage 3 to get back to the front of the field? Yeah, I just got to take care of the car here. Uh, my my biggest thing, you know, something that ends up biting me is when I find myself in these from-the-back scenarios, I get a little antsy, and I, you know, try to try to pass too many cars too quickly probably hang out here for turn one watch the chaos ensue in front of me hopefully pick a couple cars off there and then uh you know just pick them off one by one and hopefully some smart places i mean i know i made some passes in the s's before but uh, i'm gonna try to refrain from doing that uh hopefully get myself you know i i think i have the speed to get back into the top five here under green and uh set myself up nicely for that last stage go try to battle it out with brian for the win only five green flag laps here in, in stage two. Does that affect your strategy call at all? No, I think, I mean, I got I got 10 seconds on some of these guys per lap, so I think I should be fine there. Uh, obviously, I'm, I'm not going to catch Brian, probably won't catch Cody or Finnegan or maybe even Jacob Smith and Ryan Patty, but uh, I'll get a lot of them. Who knows, uh, you know, uh, you can pit with two to the... Uh, 
two to the stage here, so I might I might do a little little funny business with that, try to get myself up front, and hopefully sail it into the end. And for a couple of years now, these next gen tires on road courses they've been rock hard, don't take much wear. Is that still the case? Yeah, you notice a little bit of like a half second fall off maybe uh, at the start of the run, but funny enough, it you get that half second back at the end, so. I don't think tires are going to be a huge thing here. I know my percentages uh, after I pit there and put the new set on were looking good. So uh, I don't think that'll be a factor. It's just navigating through the field uh, safely and uh, hopefully put myself in a nice spot and maybe maybe pull one out here. Well, Vincent, a long caution period here. Five laps at the end of stage two. Best of luck in car 67. Uh, give it your all. Thanks, Andrew. Appreciate it. Put him back down there with uh, Cody Neal and Anthony DeSeo. A big day potentially for those guys if they could just get the four and seventy, well, four and sixty-seven rather, back to the front of the field. Of course, Cody Neal still up there. We spoke with him. We spoke with Ryan Smith, Nathan Finnegan, Jacob Smith. Then there's that Kyle Purcell guy that's up there in the front. He'll restart from fifth spot and sixth spot rather. It looks like. And man, there are drivers all over the place that would be some fun to talk to i feel like let's grab somebody we haven't talked to yet this season don't know if you'll uh, see us coming but driver 16 mike jennings we've seen a bit of him he had a, a rough outing at Bristol, I recall him being involved in a couple of incidents, but if we leave Bristol in the rearview mirror, Mike Jennings, uh, a decent start to the day so far towards the top half of the field. That's always a good thing. How's the 16 car feel? Uh, we're feeling all right tonight, man. Uh, just an uh, unfortunate start there on turn one, but hopefully we can keep it in the top 10 from here on out. And definitely been some physical racing on the racetrack, and you're no stranger to that from stage one. What happened out there? Uh, just at, the, I think, the first hairpin there, somebody was uh, coming in a little too hot, sent me around. We were back up into, like, maybe 25th or something like that, but we were able to work ourselves back up to the, about the teens. So, hopefully, like I said, we're uh, in a good spot now. We can uh, push forward. Best of luck in stage two. Appreciate it. Mike Jennings is going to restart in the 12th position, it looks like, as they work down into turn 19 and then 20. That has been... One heck of a stage break. I think we hit seven driver interviews during that uh, caution flag period. You can't ask for too much more, I'll tell you that much. Jacob Smith going to lead us back to the green. Ryan Patty outside of row one. Ryan Smith there in third spot. Nathan Finnegan in fourth. Cody Neal fifth. Green flag is back out at Circuit of the Americas. Green flag, stage two officially underway. Five laps to go in the stage. A big opportunity for everybody here in turn one. Coda restarts are always crazy, but that looked relatively tame. Patty will lose one spot. Finnegan goes on by Cody Neal, and there is calamity in the midfield. Mill felt around. He gets back going. Loria is going to grab a couple of spots already, and everybody's just trying to find their place. Havlin and Widener side by side through the S's. Everybody else now getting single file through the first few corners of this very punishing racetrack. Race leaders at a turn number nine. And Nathan B. Gonna make a move on Kyle Purcell. That's good for the sixth position. Nathan was very, very forgiving on Ryan Patty there at the end of stage one. Purcell dives to the inside of 11, and that'll go nowhere. Adam Ball goes wide here on quarter exit. That'll be a position gained by Joshua Clemens. And cars are around in the back, hand over fist. Tons of damage. Loria is out of the race. Oh my gosh. Anthony Campbell got free. Going to spin the 67 around. Collected by Hanover Fist. Oh boy. Whenever Vincent's able to actually drive and control his own race and not get caught up in stuff like this, I fear for the rest of the field. That's going to be a scary day for everybody else. This is the onboard for car 67. 
Campbell just gets free. I there. And Loria in the wall hard. Rather gets hit hard, then gets hit again. Rather, uh, rather hard by the 69 car. So two cars now out of the race. Milfeld and Eldred, they now fight for 18th spot. Up front, though, our top three spread out by the better part of a second. Finnegan not able to get up yet to the 30 car of Patty. Oh, Cameron Thompson, Adam Ball. Here we go. Nice little fight down the hill to turn number two. Ball going to slide into 11th spot. Thompson goes up a position. All while Jacob Gladulich is going to defend over the 25 car here of James and Haviland. And Vincent Loria has officially left the race, left the Discord. He's done for the day. On board now, position number two, Brian Smith working on Jacob Smith. This, the race lead. Down this monster back straightaway. Ryan Smith into the braking zone now for turn 12. Ryan Patty just behind these two. And the three manufacturers are represented well here as usual. A Ford leading, a Toyota second, a Chevrolet third. That's about par for the course for these guys. I mean, they have been very, very uh, diverse in terms of manufacturers. The front contact there, though, between the two Smiths. Teammates racing and making contact for the first position. That's going to bring Ryan Patty into this conversation as Brian Smith will have to go around the outside free. There is Patty, and Jacob will let Brian have it now and going to defend now over the 30 car of Ryan Patty, who's going to go way wide at turn 19. Those two still racing for the lead, though. Jacob Smith back to the inside. Here goes Finnegan to the inside for third. Big move there out of the six car, and no, he's gonna get tipped by the 30, who just, wow, I that was all too much. That was way insane. Cody Neal, fastest lap of the race at 214.01. He's the benefactor in that. He jumps up to the third spot. The Smiths now space out. Patty was able to gather it up for fourth. Finnegan drops down to seventh. Sean Purcell making a move on Jacob Gladulich. This down here at turn one. This is good for 14th spot if he can make it. Going to keep working on it. Side by side, they will go. And Gladulich going to hang on to it for now. Over the hill and into the S's. Milfelt watching these two. Purcell going to stay driver's left. Melfeld getting all kinds of gathered up and now getting hit by Timothy Harper. Contact and Harper's going to go for a slide. He's still 17th, but drops back now. Anthony Campbell racing back here with Anthony Taseo. They are tw uh, 24th and 25th. John Purcell, Gladulich side by side, and Milfeld gets on by the 14 car. There is racing all over this racetrack. Absolutely everywhere. John Purcell free there out of 11. He's going to cross the entire racetrack. And problems for the race lead. Brian Smith has been ejected from second spot. Patty now side by side. Three wide. Nathan B on the inside into the stadium section. Cody Neal trying to hang on for second spot. And Berzowski in third. Going to try and regroup now that he's up here. Jacob Smith driving away. Jacob Gladulich slow. <laughs> oh my gosh. Insanity here in stage two. And they're about to hit uh, two laps to go in stage two as well. Ryan Smith, car 78, gets sent backwards in a hurry. Let's see how it happens. Round turn 12. 
Smith gets the curbing on the inside and nearly gets collected by the four car of Cody Neal. Then Neal gets passed up by Patty who goes and misses turn 13. And that's what set everything up down here in front of the fans at the stadium section. That was beautiful stuff from all three of those guys. That was really, really fun to watch. Especially not knowing at all what led into that. Nathan Finnegan working here on Kyle Purcell. Oh, Brzezowski and Cody Neal go side by side. That's 77 starting to get aggressive now. And Neal is going to hang on to second for the time being. I'm going to amend my pronunciation here for Nathan. I'm going to go Brzezowski. Looking over uh, Google, that might be a more correct, correct pronunciation, and it sure is easier. Battling here, this is Brian Smith on Nathan Finnegan. This will be the last points-paying position in Stage 2. Finnegan blinking a little bit. That might be a nice little defense, but uh, Brian Smith... Oh, problems! Charlie Widener turned around. Anthony DeSeo now as well, back to the very back of the field along with Robert Niles and Anthony, or er, well, uh, Brock Hurst. One lap to go in stage one, and it's Jacob Smith leading the way. Cody Neal second, Nathan Brzezowski, Ryan Patty, Nathan Finnegan, back through the top five. On board with Brian Smith. And pass made easily for the 78 car. He'll drive off and away, and that has to be upsetting. If you're Nathan Finnegan, losing that spot that easily has got to be a pain. Now he gets the curbing there on the inside of the S's. I think that's the position officially grabbed by Brian Smith, unless something happens. As Dio and Haviland fight back here, this is outside of the top 15. They're going back and forth in a hurry. On board of Haviland. He's got some company, though. Jacob Gladulich right behind, making it interesting. And they'll work through the S's this time through. Jacob Smith down through turn number 12, all on his own. Three and a half seconds back to Cody Neal. That's how it looks on the racetrack. Brzezowski, and oh, here we go. Ryan Patty backing up to Brian Smith a little bit. Could get interesting. Could be fun down here in the stadium section. Last time around for stage number two. We'll pay out points to the top five once again. And they'll be in a very different order this time around. Jacob Smith out front will run through turn 19 and down to turn 20 and driver 21 took the short pit in stage one, but in stage two, it is a stage win for Jacob Smith. Smith will sweep the stages, just a different Smith here for stage two and caution. And oh, Nathan Finnegan nearly, or rather, oh, hang on, Finnegan gets Spun around a little bit, it looks like. Ryan Patty will just hang on to the fourth position, it appears. And, oh. A problem maybe for the 21.
So Jacob Smith wins the stage, and he is driving back past some of these guys at the front of the field. Something happened in turn one. I'd imagine it was on his own because he was out there to a pretty big lead. Oh, wow. He just absolutely missed the corner. <laughs> uh, stage win and then just went flying. Well, that's your stage two winner. We'll grab driver 21 and talk to him now for the second time today. Check in on his day and uh, maybe if anything is changing for his strategy plans in stage three. Uh, Jacob, stage two win, pretty big deal for car 21. Any p different plans now for stage three or is it just pit and try to stay up front? I think it's going to be a mix of both. It's pit and stay up front, but there's kind of an awkward amount of laps, so... Not really sure if it can be worth stopping uh, you know, shorter, trying to run long and taking tires, or what exactly the plan is going to be. So, I'm a little unknown here, and we're going to try and figure it out as we go. Of course, you have to run this whole lap to catch up to the pace car. Burns a lap here. Then it's another lap burnt getting back to the pit lane. How much fuel can you save under this caution? Oh, I've got about three laps of fuel up, so I'm, I'll be good. So, fuel's not really a concern as of now. Well, Jacob, congratulations on the Stage 2 win. Uh, of course, you've got the part-time label next to your name. This is your first start of the season. I'm assuming first start of the series as a whole. Um, does this maybe bring in, though, some, some larger plans to run more of the series, more of the season? Um, potentially. We ran a little bit last year, um, kind of being in this season, but haven't run it all this year. So just as, as a couple of Sundays get freed up, we'd love to keep running. Um, just kind of depends on the scheduling here. So, yeah, I mean, it seems to be going well, and I would love to, love to keep running as long as it's scheduled for me. Well, congratulations on the Stage 2 win. We'll be watching for Car 21 here in Stage 3. Awesome. Thank you, guys. He'll go back down alongside uh, Brian Smith. Definitely a potent combo today. We'll talk to the driver who goes third in Stage number 2, so long as I believe he's in the Discord channel. Uh, yes, over there at Dragonfly Racing, all on his lonesome. Just singing a song of his own tune. Uh, Nathan, I, you know what? I'm not even going to pronounce your last name this time. I'm going to have to ask. What is the cor uh, correct pronunciation here for your last name? Uh, it's Brzezowski. Brzezowski. So, okay. I In the middle of the stage, I went and did a quick Google search, and that was kind of what I, I was led to. So I'm glad I, I finally figured it out. Uh, how's the car feel? I mean, you were pretty, I would say, complacent, uh, conservative, conservative in stage one, but then a little more aggressive in stage two. Uh, maybe getting a little more confident with the car? It hits a lose, so. I mean, at the end of the run, I was really loose. I was following that Ford car a little bit too fast, but other than that, the car feels really good. And stage three, a very awkward stage length. I thought maybe we might see some drivers try to stay out here, get track position, and just pit the one time in stage three. Is that on the table? You don't have to say that you're going to do it, but is that on the table? Um, I mean, I'm going to pit right here. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm not hiding nothing from nobody. But, yeah, I'm going to pit right here. Keep my tires good. Well, very, very clear. And here comes car 77 to the pit lane. Uh, best of luck to you here, here in stage three. Thank you, brother. The Dragonfly Racing driver, all on his own this evening. We'll go back down and we'll let him get back to work. I don't see anybody staying out except... Oh, here we go. Nathan Finnegan going to do something and get a little bit uh, funky here in Stage 3. He's the only one staying out so far. Adam Ball, it looks like, will now do the same. And Pit Road is a busy, busy place. Patty down and away quickly. Smith down and away quickly. No, they, they stayed out. Smith, Patty, Finnegan all stay out. Adam Ball stays out. Cody Neal, the first one to get off of the pit lane. Brian Smith now will leave along with Brzezowski. Milfelt comes in. Harper, Gunther, Jennings has uh, come in. Gunther's got no front bumper. Now it's going to get repaired. The world happened to the 31 car. 
been gone for a uh, a while, apparently. Trying to find where the 31 car lost this front bumper. And it is proving to be a challenge. Man, we're, we're going to go further back. This is a handful of laps back already. It's going to have to happen, I guess, at the beginning of Stage 2 here. Racing with Joshua Clemens. This is Kevin Gunther. Gunther is going to be at the back end of the field grabbing repairs. Uh, let's grab driver 31 and talk to him. We've talked to Kevin a couple uh, of times yeah. this season. Uh, well, we just saw what happened in replay to the front end of your car, Nathan. Or not Nathan, Kevin. Uh, going through some repairs now to begin stage three. How was the car feeling after that impact? It felt good. I was lacking straightaway speed, so I'm just going to bite the bullet and get this thing repaired. I got 30 seconds left. Uh, I have no clue where the pace car is, so... That's fun, but you know, I uh, I think this thing will be all right. Um, it felt pretty good. I had speed, and if I can get that straight line speed, I think I can get back to the front here, keep my nose clean, and get some good pitch strategy. Well, the car looks a whole lot better now than it did when you came into the pit lane. I will say that. I'll even do you a solid. The pace car is down in turn 12 almost on the back stretch. So uh, you got some time there, but best of luck here on stage three. All right, thank you, buddy. Hey, do I have a front bumper again? You do. Oh, sweet. We're back in this, baby. Uh, hopefully we can put on a good show. Ryan, hopefully Ryan can get out front here. Him and Nathan are battling hard. And uh, if I can get this thing back up in the top 10. Yeah, I don't know if you can look at another monitor, can you? No, I can't. Oh. I, I'm, I'm racing now. Well, I was going to say, we can show that you've got that bumper again. It looks pretty good, I will say. I guess I'm playing spotter this evening. Uh, the, the car looks good. So uh, best of luck here in the third stage. All right, thank you, buddy. Kevin Gunther getting that uh, front end repaired and back on the racetrack. Good to talk to him. And as these guys have an extra pace lap before we go racing again, we have not yet spoken to the driver who's going to line up second place for the second stage restart in a row. Begin stage two. He lined up side by side with Jacob Smith after Smith stayed out. And Patty was just the first one off the pit lane. Now, Ryan Patty, things a bit different. Staying out at the end of stage two, going to pit earlier than in stage three, but you hold on to this track position. Uh, how's the race going for you, and why this strategy move? Yeah, so uh, I, I know we don't have the outright speed here, just trying to do something a little different to get up front, maybe lead a lap. And uh, I was hoping the 21 car would have come in there. Um, I don't think he's going to pit now, but uh, yeah, it didn't quite work out to get the lead here. I don't know if I might be able to get by him coming to the green and lead a lap but uh, really just hoping for a top five if i can get one well i like the strategy move a whole lot i, I was really wondering if somebody was going to pull this it ends up being a bunch of you guys out front so it should be a little more tame uh how long do you have to go here though to get into range for the end of the race uh, looking like i've got about six laps of fuel um once we take the green and then i'll have to come in top off and then i should have enough to get to the end from there how close do you think it's going to be uh, no, we should be good. Um, we're not going to get any full course cautions. I mean, if we had green, white checkers, then I'd have to come in again. But uh, if we're going the scheduled distance, we should be solid if once, uh, once I come in after about six. And I have, how about this new paint scheme? Uh, it's got a pretty cool feature on the spoiler. I mean, we saw that earlier. Uh, <laughs> pretty cool paint scheme in general, but different from what you've ran the rest of the season. What's going on? Yeah, no, I uh, you know, brought Valvoline on board. I've always you know, been a fan of Valvoline and, and, and what they do. They've always been a great proponent of motorsports and sponsor of my favorite driver, Mark Martin, for a lot of a lot of years there. So, a little bit of a tribute to the uh, the 2000 Mark Martin scheme. If you guys know that one, that's uh, kind of what this is based off of, even though it's a little bit different. Definitely some very cool influences there, Ryan. Good to talk to you. Best of luck as you restart second for the second time in a row here, alongside that 21 car. Best of luck. Yeah, I appreciate you. And if, if you do talk to the six car, tell them I apologize for the contact there. That was uh, completely just a lack of talent on my part. Oh, best of luck. Uh, maybe we'll talk to him again. All right. Sounds good. Thank you. What's interesting is uh, he's having me tell Nathan Finnegan, and they're in the same team channel. Um, oh, Angry Hubby coming in saying, uh, that's it, I'm getting me one of these. You absolutely should. If you're not yet on iRacing, uh, you absolutely should. You might have missed kind of the the golden age renaissance 
for uh, sim racing during the COVID pandemic. Um, one of the few, there really wasn't much good to come out of that, but uh, I guess that was one of the not so bad things, I suppose. Um, but sim racing, I, I feel like it just continues to take off in, in big, big ways. And if you're not yet into it, well, you can get involved. Go to iRacing.com and check out what it might take for you, whether it's uh, grabbing the subscription and using an existing uh, computer that can handle the iRacing software to, to just get going or whatever it might be. iRacing does come with some pretty big performance requirements. Um, the... Well, the performance requirements are all listed on iRacing.com. They are pretty significant, admittedly, and they continue to get larger. This is a really in-depth platform if you're new to it, and there is just a lot that goes into it. So, uh, very much recommend going to YouTube, learning a little bit, researching a little bit. If you're brand new to sim racing, for sure, uh, do some research. If you're maybe uh, you know, involved, a little more novice, maybe coming over from another platform, another sim, um, Still, I'd recommend researching, but I think you can just go down iRacing.com and learn a whole bunch that way. As the field works down the long Coda backstretch, let's take a look first at this season. Now, the Austin race length has changed, of course. 41 laps this evening, not 50, but everything else should stay the same. 240 laps on Easter Sunday next week for these guys. When they go to Richmond Raceway, then we'll do it all over again at Martinsville, 240 laps there. Then it's Texas, Talladega for 113, Dover for 240, then Kansas, Darlington, and Charlotte to complete this first kind of opening portion and through the end of May. As far as what we have upcoming here at Pit Stop TV, it's not too different, at least on the Icon Cup Series front. The only difference is that we will not have a broadcast for Richmond Raceway. At least that's not the plan, uh, being that it is Easter Sunday. just a little more difficult for us to facilitate that. Um, but best of luck to everybody at Richmond. should be a lot of fun, and I'm intrigued to see how things change between now and and Martinsville in a couple of weeks. We do go racing at somewhere that is still unknown for the Sarah Pierce Fleet Service Super Series. Super late models at a track that is yet to be determined. You've got to tune in Thursday to find out where they're racing. It's a mystery to all of us. It's Fast AF Designs Mystery Night. Out of turn 20 and back into the Geico restart zone, the field will pull around the final corner and get this race back underway at Circa the Americas. We are racing once again in race five of the season. Big moves all around. That's Cody Neal moving around a bit. Nathan Finnegan in a straight line, and we've got a spin, a big, big mess out front, a crash in turn one, Finnegan after driving way wide, is going to pull away, and they're still parked all over the place in the first corner. Smith to the back, Patty to the back, Purcell turned around, Finnegan the race leader, Brzezowski second, Brian Smith now third, Cody Neal fourth, and Gladulich is still having problems as Cody Neal has taken on a whole bunch of front end damage, and the four car is going to continue to sink back. Now into sixth, and Mike Jennings is on him. Brzezowski going to have to defend from one of the best. It's Brian Smith down to turn 11. And Smith is just going to go right up the inside and take that spot away. Brzezowski, no choice but to allow that to happen. He might have something, though, in turn 12. James and Haviland here. A bunch of guys making moves down now to turn 11. Three wide, one car way out wide. That's Nyman off the racetrack. Ball gets back on. Rakowski in the middle of all of this. And Ryan Patty even is in that bunch. Smooth sailing up front. They're starting to get single file and space out. What in the world just happened in turn one, though? Oh, my gosh. There was contact there between Thompson and Milfeld. They were all over the place. Up front, though, Finnegan is going to go straight through. There's more crashing. Ball, Havland involved, Nyman. But here is turn one. That was a look just for Finnegan in the six car. You've got to watch the four of Cody Neal in the 21. 
of Jacob Smith. The 21 is the race leader going up the hill. And Jacob Smith crosses over. He's a bit checked up, and he's going to be wide. Turns across. There's Cody Neal there. Ryan Patty goes for a spin. I mean, just absolute chaos. Are you sure how the 30 car gets turned around? 30 second in line. Smith moved. Neal blocked. Tried to cover it up, and Neal was actually locking up, and I think was always going to hit the 21 car. Brzezowski just got into the 30. Thompson got him, and there you see already parked. Patty just trying to turn around. The car's coming through still. Now Kyle Purcell turned around with Anthony Campbell. Just chaos all over. Jacob Smith has come in, and he's going to have to hit one more time after all of this. Anthony DeSeo slow at turn one. Absolute chaos to begin stage three, and wouldn't you know it, Nathan Finnegan going to cycle to the race lead. This feels a bit like Phoenix, in a way. Although Brian Smith is a whole lot closer. And actually, this might even feel a little bit like Bristol a week ago, where uh, the sixth car inherited the race lead. Smith then got set back. But this time, much different setback, and he's really not far back at all. I mean, within seven tenths, he's going to get the draft down this straightaway. And I think these two will be racing before long, and I, I think this race might even be Brian Smith's at this point in time. Bill Felt Jr., Cameron Thompson, they're going to work on the back stretch. And this should be a straight-up move for Millfelt to the inside. A big run. And with all that damage that a bunch of these drivers just accrued, I think we're going to see a whole lot of mismatches across the field. Thompson going to hang on to that spot. Stadium section now for Finnegan and Smith. They come around the carousel, and these two might put on one heck of a fight. Of course, Finnegan's got the race win at Phoenix. Smith has got it from Las Vegas. How aggressive will these two get, or will they stay conservative with one another? Nice little setup there for the front stretch from Brian, but he's going to fall back just a little bit as Brian Smith gets back on the racetrack. Michael Milfeld Jr., Cameron Thompson, they continue racing. Brian Smith trying to find some way for turn one. He'll sit back, try to pull a crossover, not going to happen. Cody Neal then looking on Timothy Harper, and he will take that spot. So back into position number four for the four car. And this is the race for the win at this point. We still have 17 laps to go. Anthony Campbell turned around out of turn 19. He'll get back going. 17 laps to go for these two. A pit stop remaining. A whole lot of racing left to go. And a move here. Brian Smith going to go up the inside, now the outside. Trying to find some way to get by the six of Finnegan. Who's going to keep him covered up. Down to turn 12, an opportunity here maybe? No, Brian Smith keeps it just in behind the six car, and I, I think there's definitely some value to waiting if you're the 78 car. Or maybe go here at turn 13, very close between these two. The field getting settled in now. A couple of battles, though, popping up across the racetrack. Brock Hersey chasing Adam Ball for 17th spot. Kyle Purcell chasing James and Haviland. But we can't stray too far from these two. We'll be pulling up on Thomas Taylor here soon. Contact there, and Smith lets him gather it up. That actually may benefit the six of Finnegan. If he's able to just get the power down, and, and he was, pull away a little bit, he'll get a bit of a cushion now. Again, it's the 57 of Taylor just ahead. That's the lapped car. I 
I still, I, I go back to that lap one, not lap one, turn one from, I guess, lap one of the stage. That was just absolute calamity. Chaos all over the racetrack. Brian Patty, one of the big losers. The 30 car now runs position number 11, actually. So not as bad as I thought, but here we go. A move maybe for the race lead. Finnegan defending down to turn 11. Not much he can do in this situation, though. He's going to try and cross the 78 over. Nope. Oh, the defeat. I could see it there as soon as he realized what he was doing and that he was going to hit that curve and just kind of hump over it. Oh, man. Brian Smith definitely faster. Spin in the back. Mike Jennings. Oh, he didn't quite spin, but he got hit by the two car. And it's supposed to be the seven. Cameron Thompson, I think, missing the memo there. Kevin Gunther now pulls up. He's eighth. Remember when he was in the pit lane for a long time because he had damage from stage two. A little bit of contact there now with, uh, well, with the seven of Thompson. You see Ryan Patty just behind here. He's got no front bumper again. He's working on Charlie Widener. This is for the 10th spot. I think if Ryan can walk out of here with a top 10, it would still feel like a success, and it looks like he'll do that as Widener goes wide at turn 15. Meanwhile, Jacob Smith trying to work through some of the field. He's got Brock Hersey to his right side at a turn 13, and he'll make that pass. Thompson free, and he's going to go for a slide and a stop on the front stretch. He'll get back going, but there goes Ryan Patty for ninth. Best battle on the racetrack now going to be for third spot. Brzezowski over the four of... Neil and oh Cody got real free there at turn seven turn eight now nine and at the top of the hill there's turn 10 to head back down such a tough quarter oh man the day of work before this race is starting to catch up to me Jacob Smith James and Havlin they swap spots This continues to be the best fight on the racetrack, aside from maybe the two Purcells now being nose to tail. Kyle Purcell over Sean Purcell. This is for 16th position. And Kyle Purcell will hang out of the spot. So 16th, 17th won't change for now. If you go back to the top five, I mean, this co this continues to just be a really interesting, compelling little fight. Cody Neal and Brzezowski just kind of clawing back into relevance in this top three. If he can get there and he will have it, Brzezowski going to give that spot up to the four car of Cody Neal. Talked about it earlier, just how bad this season has gone for Neal and Loria both. Neil rebounding. He's putting a race together here in the four car, despite some troubles, trials, tribulations. But if you go back to the Icon Cup Series standings coming into today, as Brzezowski nearly got the four car there in turn seven. You can see where Cody Neal 
is just kind of in a bad spot. Right here, position 15. Trying to sir. Now it'll let me circle him. Position 15, Cody Neal, right there. The big note is that he is 78 points out of the lead. Vincent Loria just ahead in 13th spot, 10 points up. But Cody Neal, through the stage points he's received this evening and where he's currently running, I think he's going to end up moving certainly ahead of Joshua Clemens, Cody Eldred, Adam Ball for sure. Maybe, well, I don't see Zach Lockett here. Is he here? No, I didn't think so. So certainly ahead of Zach Lockett. I'd even move ahead of Milfelt. Well, that's a 20-point difference. He's picked up a bunch so far. That's a possibility. Milfelt runs... Well, actually, maybe not. Milfelt runs sixth. Uh, Gunther's putting, uh, Gunther is putting a pretty decent day together, as is Glandulich. Uh, actually, no, Glandulich is 25th. He's also nearly 40 points ahead of four cars. So I would say uh, around 11th, maybe 10th, is a decent expectation for the four car after today, which is a big step up. I mean, he, he would be thrust right back into uh, the points conversation. But we still have a long ways to go, evidenced by a pit stop for Nathan Finnegan, this time just inside of the fuel window. We talked about 14 laps being the point. Finnegan down and away. There you see approximately 14 to 16 laps, and this pit stop for Finnegan will come with 13 to go. More pitting. Here's Milfeld, Harper, Patty is in. We'll see if he's able to get any damage repairs. I do see a front bumper back on the 30 car. He's down and away quickly. Very brief stop. So he'll get back into it right behind Purcell. That's Kyle Purcell out there. Oh, Luke Rakowski and Patty just cleaned the 33 out. Got into the 01. That is a huge mistake. From driver number 30. I mean, he cleaned him out. Nathan Finnegan going to blend in, and he's going to take fifth away now from Mike Jennings. So the Delta. Finnegan was, I believe, two or three seconds back of your race leader. He is now 30 seconds back. I don't believe he took tires. If he did, he took just lefts. Jacob Smith, he pitted earlier in the stage. I think he'll have to pit again, but he is racing here with Cody Eldred into the top 10 as they run. Of course, many drivers pitting that lap. A lot of these guys have not. However, Timothy Harper there in the foreground, he has. Ryan Patty has pitted. As we saw the pit exit, that was painful. As now Kyle Purcell is going to go for a spin. He just hit the 32 in the back end and immediately went around. Rakowski going to gather it up, and he is now 18th spot. Gladulich, by the way, has seemingly parked it within the last five minutes, and it looks like the driver out of Georgia that had such a promising run a week ago at Bristol might be out of this race. Unfortunate to see for sure. Cameron Thompson into the pit lane, and that... Huh. That might be a toe. Oh, no. This is a terrible problem for Cameron Thompson in the seven car. Well, right on board... This is a terrible, terrible prom problem, words. Terrible problem. So he's running behind. It looks like that's Jennings ahead. He's going to decide to pit right here. 
And as he does, overshoots it entirely and completely breaks the right front. Hits the guardrail again for good measure. An absolutely awful accident for Thompson. And Cameron is going to be squarely out of this race. He's going to drop down the order. Well, I say that. He's going back out. I'm not sure what he's trying to get. I mean, the car is absolutely destroyed. I, I, I don't know what there is to gain here. He can't turn left. Uh, he's got nothing. He's got no steer to the left, and he will call it there. But we'll go live to a fight now with Jacob Smith, Timothy Harper, and Ryan Patty. Kyle Purcell going to jump in behind Cody Eldred once again, and this time goes much more smoothly. Brian Smith is the race leader. He's still on the racetrack, working on lap number 10 now. And Thompson has officially parked it. Let's grab driver seven and see what happened there and, well, how bad the car is. Cameron Thompson, I know you're out of the race at this point, at least for the time being. Uh, what happened there? Uh, I came into the pits way too hot and just smoked the tire barriers. Well, we saw you were in a pretty heated couple of battles. The midfield was very, very spicy, very fun to watch at times. Uh, what was it oh, like it back there for you? It was awful. I hated it so much. I we did our best, we had some fun, but no, it, I, the up front was a lot better, but I just got overzealous and went way too hard into those uh, pit lane. Well, I understand why it might not have been that fun from the driver perspective, but it was fun to watch here. Uh, but now we get to really focus up on Richmond and Martinsville, a couple of short tracks coming up. How do you feel for them? Uh, short tracks is not my strong suit, but we're going to get some practice laps in and hopefully do better than what we did here today. Well, best of luck, Cameron. It's good to talk to you finally. I think it's been a little bit, uh, but been a yeah, hopefully we're, we're talking to you again soon and for better reason. All right, buddy. Have a good day. As well, that's Cameron Thompson, car number seven. Nathan Finnegan here. This is going to be for the fourth spot. Kevin Gunther and Finnegan here down to turn 12, and this should go smoothly. Finnegan will take the spot away. The six car will drive off. We haven't had many of these races where we have kind of a neat meat and potato section where it gets a little bit less exciting. Although, well, we're not going to today, apparently. Timothy Harper, Jacob Smith bobbing and weaving down the backstretch and a block here, a block there. Harper will have the position into turn 12. Smith wants to take it away, and Patty there is on his back bumper. Look how close they got through the apex there of turn 12. Well, we'll see if uh, a driver who's out of the race will will chat with us while these guys get to racing. Vincent Loria in the 67, I think, playing spotter maybe a little bit for his teammates now. Vincent, uh, we saw what happened at turn 10. What's going on for you? Yeah, man, I just can't catch a break in these things, I guess. I mean, I, was, I didn't make any passes through the start. I stayed behind them in the S's. Thought that over the hill he was going really slow and I'd be able to be fine. I guess he just got loose and lost it. And then, uh, unfortunately, uh, Hanover hit me there. So that was a little bit uh, unfortunate as well. But another killed race car. Nothing new, it seems, uh, to be the trend here early on in the season. Definitely been a tough start to things, but you've got all the speed and more to contend up front. And of course, this is a playoff format, which means you can have a few of these bad races and still make the playoffs and still contend for a championship. So, I, you know, how difficult is it, I guess, to keep that big picture in mind? I'm not too worried about it. I mean, if I didn't, the 78 was, you know, kind of complaining about the start there. You know, if I didn't have to take the EOL, I think I was easily the fastest car out here. I mean, I qualified on pole by a decent amount. So, you know, I, I feel like this is one that I definitely would have been able to win and probably should have won. Um, but, you know, it's just you got to 
you gotta get the those ones done because you know brian's fast pretty much everywhere so when i get one of these races where i am you know clearly faster than him uh i, I gotta gotta be able to seal the deal to lock myself in and uh, unfortunately tonight was not the night but uh, hopefully one of one of the those nights will will come here soon where the you know, stars kind of align and I can actually get it done. Well, we have a rare chance here to to look at your teammate while we're talking to you, and uh, while it may not be you on the racetrack in P2, I think Cody is carrying the banner pretty nicely, despite a whole lot of setbacks for you guys as a duo. Really, um, how much can you be there as a teammate now and coach him along these last uh, well, I guess now eight laps or so to the end here, so he can try to hang on a second. Yeah, I mean, he, he knows what he needs to do. He's been, you know, believe it or not, he's been doing this longer than I have. So uh, I think he knows he knows uh, what he needs to do to get it done. I mean, you can see he's got a little bit of damage on the car there. So uh, not really sure how that's going to affect him. I mean, I, I just try to, you know, stay quiet, offer support where I can with, uh, you know, fuel and pit stops and stuff like that. But, uh, you know, it's, it's looking like he's at least going to bring a, a P3 uh, home here. So... Uh, you know, we most of the collaboration we do is in the prep work, anyways. And, uh, you know, he he had uh, a little bit less time to prep than than I did, uh, but you know, he he picked it up quick, dialed him right in, and and he's he's wheeling that thing out there. And this maybe shows us what's pretty important that you've got speed over the 78 on a road course. What's the next track then that you feel like you've got to focus extensively on to try and have that same kind of opportunity? I mean, I can I can pretty much, you know, take it to him anywhere now. I mean, the the main thing is the qualifying. I mean, obviously today he kind of took me out, so that that sucked. But uh, you know, with with how finicky these next gen cars are uh, with the with the aero, uh, if you can qualify up front, you can pretty much do you know, uh, you can do well every time at least. You know, staying out of messes and stuff like that. So. I think it's just going to come down to wherever I can out-qualify him. Obviously, I've shown tonight that, you know, the road course is playing my, uh, play into my advantage, and I'm, I'm a bit faster there. So I think, you know, uh, coming into, I believe the next one might be Chicago. Um, or, or I could be wrong, but... Uh, Sonoma, Chicago sounds Chicago. right. Maybe yeah, Sonoma, Sonoma, one or two. Chicago, uh, Watkins Glen, pretty much any of those. I don't think I really have to worry about him. He typically hangs around the first first couple laps but uh you know long run I, I think i can i can pull away from them so maybe try to focus on those to to get a win but other than that i should be able to uh you know contest them at some other spots uh, short tracks aren't really my thing but i think some of the intermediates i can get them too well I, I believe you can see the screen share right i can yes professional opinion and take out the fact here that this is the 21 car or anything that happened earlier there was definitely some physicality um what is going on here from your perspective just a driver's perspective we haven't done this before we haven't talked to a driver mid-race like this out of the race uh so what do you make of all of this i think that's all clean there you know the 21 he seems to be a little bit uh off pace uh lack of prep work could be the issue there i mean you see him you know smoking the turtle and stuff like that so Typically, you know, when you're getting hounded down, I think it's a better idea to just, you know, get out of the way than keep throwing blocks and stuff because, you know, this isn't open wheel racing uh, and these cars are pretty sturdy. So you keep throwing blocks, you know, you'll get you'll get Ross Chastained. And, and I think that's what's happened to him right there. And then, I mean, on the second hit there with, with Tim Harper, uh, uh, Tim Harper's coming through quickly. He dives it down to the bottom, uh, even if, you know, you got... Formula One brakes on this thing. You're not going to be able to slow it down that quick. So that one there just looks like uh, an un unfortunate event for the 21 car. And I don't mean to stoke the fire, but now you're maybe a little bit less professional opinion. What did happen between you and the 21 car and the carousel earlier in the race in stage one? Oh, he just, yeah, I mean, he's just off pace. Uh, I thought that he would be going a little bit quicker. You know, he showed me the inside um, and I wasn't going to sit behind him. I mean, I... I got spun out and I caught right back up. So I wasn't going to sit behind him for too long. He showed me the inside. I put the nose in there and, and kind of, you know, w whether I came up or he came down or, or whatever, I'm not really, I'm not really sure. I haven't, haven't dove into the replay too much, but one thing's for sure. I was there and he got the worst of it. So I, I, I see it as a little bit of a, an unfortunate racing incident. 
I I will come clean here. It, my first look, I was like, oh, he, he corrected. He hit him intentionally. I look back at it, washed your hands, and it definitely changes the story big time. Um, I think it was all just kind of convenient how everything was happening so quickly in those first nine laps. Vincent, it's good to talk to you. Clear that up, and hopefully we're talking to you later for a, a better reason maybe at uh, Martinsville. Yep, thanks, Andrew. Appreciate it. Vincent Loria, nice long chat there. Some professional and maybe less professional opinions, but good to chat with driver of the 67 as his teammate gets uh, sorted out from second place there with Nathan Finnegan. So now seven laps to go, and Cody Neal might be on his back foot. Everybody's now pitted. In fact, Brian Smith pitted a little over a lap ago. And he is still five seconds up on Nathan Finnegan. So uh, unless something drastic changes, we're talking about Car 78 being our first repeat winner of the season, which is interesting. It was the Daytona winner in the NASCAR Cup Series. Earlier today, William Byron, who got his second win on the season, and that is your first repeat winner of 2024. Of course, 24 and 24 might not be as prominent here in the Icon Cup Series. Brock hersey has been having some challenges, but the driver who was just behind him to try and put him a lap down, Brian Smith, while he didn't win Daytona, he has a chance here to be our first repeat winner of the season. One Las Vegas, second race of the season. Might win here for race number two, and one could say that maybe he should have won the last two races at Phoenix and Bristol. Also want to give a shout out, a nod, if you will, to my beautiful fiance, Kayla, who in the middle of that spiel, I don't know if it was a spiel, actually, if it was the middle of the interview with uh, with Loria, but um, brought me a Coke Spiced. And I know we had Josh Kahn over watching earlier. I see Angry Hubby from earlier, even TDA, I believe that's Hanover Fist. Um, I don't know if you guys have tried this new flavor of Coke. By the way, not a sponsor at all. Not a sponsor. Um, I don't know if you've tried this new Coke. I'm not usually a Coke guy. Not usually one to drink soda like that, as Havlin and Rakowski both missed turn one. But as we take six laps to go, I gotta say, it's pretty refreshing for a Coke. I, 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 I didn't think I'd be saying that in the mid middle of a broadcast. Um, I said, hey. Bring, bring me water if you can, or a Powerade, or even a Coke. I don't care. I just need something. She brought me a Coke Spice. Not only does it taste fantastic, um, it does actually feel pretty refreshing right now. As there goes Brian Smith to the inside now of James and Havland. He just passed uh, Brock Hersey a couple corners prior, and now Tanner Dio turned around at turn number 11. Uh, well, Coke can go with whiskey for sure. Um, maybe not during a broadcast. Uh, Mike Jennings back on the racetrack. He'll blend in the ninth spot right behind Michael Milfelt Jr. And while we can't talk to Michael, boy, it's been a tough race for him. Caved in front end. But he is going to be one of the, I think, banner carriers for Toyota. Of course, you've got Brian Smith out front. But there is no other Toyota in the top 10. And when we got this season going, it felt like it was a Toyota Renaissance here in the Icon Cup Series, much like 2311 and Joe Gibbs, uh, Joe Gibbs Racing, and even um, Legacy Motor Club. Big time Toyota Renaissance in the NASCAR Cup Series, bringing, uh, I always say Renaissance, it's a revolution. It's the addition now of two more Toyotas. Then there was a Toyota in Kamui Kobayashi today, um, at Coda, so an extra Toyota there. It, it feels like the Camrys have been spectacular in the Cup Series. Come over here to Icon, and you've got Brian Smith leading the way, and, and sure, he's done a fantastic job. Even Michael Milfeld Jr. has been pretty solid, but I, it feels like since Daytona, we no longer have Justin Michael up here. He hasn't been racing as often. Charlie, Charlie Widener has had a rough day, a rough couple of weeks. Um, so we haven't seen much of him. We don't have Heath Smith to mix things up up front. 
it's a very off day for Toyotas and the Purcells. I mean, Kyle Purcell is down here in 13th spot. I'm honestly shocked that Sean Purcell is still in this race. Uh, he's down in 16th. He's just been beaten around by, it feels like everybody, but he's actually got a clean looking race car right now. I'm impressed. Um, it just, it, it, it's interesting how the, the season started out so strongly for the Toyotas in the series and has now completely changed. Now, five laps to go. Nice little fight for second. Cody Neal pulls up on Nathan Finnegan and they'll run through the turn 10. Neal falls back a little bit. And you see Finnegan, clearly he's affected by the battle. That's the first thing you want if you're Cody Neal here. All right, Nathan's defending. Good deal. You know, I, I, I've been through, in fact, I've got a great friend who's taught me a lot about road course racing, David Levine. And he hasn't been on one of these broadcasts, but we've covered his league before, the LMS Racing League. He's been a big part of the comment section before. He watches a lot of these races. He might even be watching tonight. He's taught me a lot. And I feel like at this point, if I'm in a road race and I'm able to bait somebody, I'm able to get in somebody's head to the point where they are defending into a breaking zone like turn 11 here at Coda, I feel like I've already won the fight. I just have to actually follow through. I don't know if that's the case here. I don't know how Cody Neal is going to feel about it, but if I was in Cody's position, I would feel very, very good right now. All right, I'm in I'm in Nathan's head. I'm able to, to start affecting him. He's he's He knows I'm here. He's now cognizant, and he's changing his behavior on the racetrack because of me. That's already a big win if you're the attacking car. Now you've just got to string those beads together and be able to make a, a bracelet or a necklace out of this so to speak. You've just got to go through and execute at this point. And there we go. That was a big slip up out of the six car. That was a big, big slip up for the six of Finnegan. And now you see he's defending again down the front stretch. And if you're Cody, you don't have to make this move here at all. You don't have to make this move on this lap. You've got four to go. You don't have to do it the next lap, even the lap after. you just got to set yourself up for that final lap and find a way by him by then. At this point, you're not going to catch Brian Smith in the race lead. Just try to get this second spot. On the flip side of all of that, if, if I'm Finnegan, um, I also might feel pretty good here because, uh, you know, if I am Finnegan, I've been able to defend successfully a handful of times and keep this four car behind me. Of course, I went and passed the four, but at the same time, it's getting tougher and tougher. So, oh, slip up there and see, pass made by Cody Neal and Finnegan gonna slip up and fall back, but now the ball is back in Nathan's court. How can you make Cody change things? And oh, big dive there almost. And yes, a dive for sure. Finnegan got there. Neil able though to power out out of the breaking or out of the uh, corner. And well, if I was Nathan Finnegan, I wouldn't be in that situation because I wouldn't have done that. And of her fist going straight for the Coke and whiskey. I, uh, can't blame you. And oh, a big send here out of Finnegan. I I don't get the desperation. Unless he knows he's a bit off pace compared to Cody in the four car. I don't understand the desperation. That opens up now the chance there at 13. And uh, that might be the four car now gone. I mean, he just sailed right on by. Not so fast. Here comes Finnegan back again for the carousel. Oh my gosh. And this is the longest these tires have gone. Uh, Neil, I believe, was fuel only. Finnegan took two left sides, I think. And now Finnegan gives that spot right back to the four car. This is amazing. Three laps to go between these two. Now, nine seconds nearly off of the race leader. Brzezowski is the next car back. He's 26 seconds back of these two as he races in the fourth position. Ryan Paddy has somehow fought and clawed back to fifth. Kevin Gunther in sixth. Timothy Harper in seventh spot. Then Milfelt, Jennings, and Clemens complete your top ten. Kyle Purcell works here on Charlie Widener. So speaking of the Toyotas, they will fight for twelfth. All while Finnegan just squares this four car right back up. And there's a slow car. That's Tanner Dio. And you see the four trying to adjust for it. Cody Neal trying to get back to the right side of the track and get the 
perfect entry there for seven. That was grand. Now eight, the top of the hill at nine. That's going to be tough right behind the 20 car. And sure enough, Dio held him up big time. Now, does Neil go defensive? No, he's going to give the open door to the six car of Nathan Finnegan, who's going to try and cover the crossover. It's not going to work. Big move there out of Cody Neal. Right back alongside. They're going to side draft. They're going to beat and bang, maybe, as we work down to turn 12. Three laps to go. We'll call it two and a half when they get down to this breaking zone. Neil on the inside, Finnegan on the outside. The advantage will flip when they get down to 13. Finnegan, though, going to be cleared by the four car. And Cody Neal squarely has the position now and the advantage. Through the rest of the stadium section, though, the six car not far back. This, though, might be the farthest he's been from the second spot in the last 15 laps. Purcell and Widener, they fight through the S's. Purcell into 12th now. Widener drops to 13th. Jacob Smith and Joshua Clemens. That's the fight for 9th. Smith will take that away. Finnegan and Neal down to turn 20. Finnegan on the inside. Great corner. Two laps to go. Side by side again. Up the hill. This is absolutely fantastic between these two. Finnegan deep locks up the left rear. He's going to go for a big slide and Cody Neal goes right on through. That might be the nail in the coffin. That is a big advantage now for the four car of Cody Neal. That might be the one he needed. Still got to get through some lap traffic, though. And this is only for second. I mean, these guys are nearly 10 seconds behind Brian Smith, who, by the way, is already down into turn 11 now. Does he have any lap traffic up ahead? Not for a while, it looks like. Not for a while. Clear sailing for the 78 car. See in the distance, the 4 and 6 getting somewhat close together now as they lap the 04 of Sean Purcell. And Neil able to use this draft down the back straightaway. He'll pull to the inside of Sean and should have an easy braking zone here to turn 12. Oh, sideways though. Wheel hopping was the 4 car. Finnegan closes right back in. And we're far from done. Here we go, rinse and repeat. Right back together, they'll have the white flag this time by, and Finnegan back on the offensive. Meanwhile, Timothy Harper, Michael Milfelt, they're going to fight for seventh these last couple of laps. There we go, Finnegan right back to the four car. They'll have a lap to settle it while Brian Smith exits turn 20. White flag in the air brought to you by Whiplash Simcams. Cody Neal the advantage, gets the power down. One lap to go, 20 opportunities for Finnegan to fight back into second place. And you just gotta hope at this stage in the race that these two don't make a mistake that takes one or the other out. Lock up there from the rear brakes. Finnegan squaring up for the S's, nearly gets into Cody Neal there. Problems, Jacob Smith into the pit lane on the last lap, couldn't save enough fuel. He's not the only one, Michael Milfelt turned around. That's in turn 12 out of the fight with Timothy Harper. And now Nathan Finnegan, chances are running slim. That's turn eight, turn nine here. And now turn 10, it's already half of the final opportunities Finnegan's going to have. Realistically, it's got to happen in 12. Or he's going to try and do it down here at 11, locking up all the way into the corner. Oh, a valiant effort, but that's going to roast those front tires. And I'll be impressed if he's able to even fight back to the four car at this point. 
Brian Smith hard in the breaking zone for turn 12. And car and driver 78. A clean race car. Had contact with Vincent Loria, and I think Loria is going to remember that. And that's how the 67 car was written out of this race, more or less. It all started with that. Smith got the spot away at turn 12 and has not looked back since. He's had to race a little bit between himself and Jacob Smith. Otherwise, a clean race for car 78. So long as he nails these last two apexes, it's a second race win. The first repeat winner of the season in 2024. And Brian Smith, redeeming himself from both Phoenix and Bristol collectively, is going to win at Circuit of the Americas. Cody Neal going to come through. That's going to be position number two. Fantastic fight. Sensational even between those two. To wrap up this race. Amazing stuff. Can't wait to talk to them both. Brzezowski back here is going to finish fourth. So long as he makes it back to the stripe. There is a fight happening between Hersey and Havland. They're going to come through the carousel and have one more opportunity or so to, to sort out 18th position. Contact maybe. Havland just gets into the 24. He's still got turn 20 if he can dive deep enough. This for 18th. No, they'll keep it clean. Oh, oh they got close. But uh, Hersey will take 18th. Here comes Ryan Patty out of the final quarter between those two. Patty and Gunther both. At some point or another after the stage two caution had no front bumper. And they will finish fifth and sixth. That's fantastic between those two. Michael Milfelt. Don't know what happened to him. I'm going to imagine it was contact with Timothy Harper. It might not have been, though. He's going to finish eighth place. Harper will take seventh. And for Brian Smith, it's a job well done. For good reason, I think there's going to be a, a little bit of uh, distaste around the win just because I think there's a pretty strong voice in Vincent Loria. I think there will absolutely be that moment when you look back at this race win for the 78 car. That is definitely forming uh, of the rest of the race between those two. Of course, Loria then gets sorted out to the back where he's in all of that calamity with Jacob Smith at one point. The start admittedly EOLs the 67, so maybe you could argue that it would be that way regardless, but uh, the start puts the 67 back to the end of the field, has to come back through in stage two, and absolutely gets cleaned out to begin the stage on the first lap of the stage. So as the field comes on through, everybody has now finished this race aside from Jacob Smith, who ends up not going back on the racetrack. He will take 22nd as his result. It's Brian Smith, though, with the race win. 26 laps led out of 41. That's all but 15. And while he works around to the front stretch, let's take a quick look at race results. Ryan Smith with the race win. Cody Neal 10 seconds back. Nathan Vinnigan there in third. Brzezowski, Patty, Gunther. And the rest of the top 10 on your screen. Mike Jennings, great result there after what uh, could have been a much different day. To the 78, burn it down behind, but there's the results through now. 20th position, Adam Ball, the final car in the lead lap. And down through 30th. Brian Smith doing a burnout. About a third of the length of the front stretch so far. A little bit quick. The smoke dissipates. And there he goes. Celebrating some more. I think worthy uh, of celebration for sure on the front stretch here at Coda. Fantastic place to go and race. And driver 78 will give it a rest. Forty-one laps done just like that. Let's go back and take a look. 
Well, actually, I, I suppose just go back and talk to our drivers who finish towards the front of the field. Brian Smith, of course, with that race win, he'll be first up. He's already ready to come talk to us. Brian Smith, another race win. First repeat winner on the season, much like William Byron earlier today. Does that maybe uh, bode well for you, you feel like, drawing some parallels already? I'd certainly hope so. Anytime you lead the league in a race win, it's a, it's a good sign, right? Absolutely, and to get it done now on an intermediate and a road course, that's a pretty significant portion of the schedule that you feel like you can go and win again at, right? I mean, uh, all the intermediates, I think, feel, fit right in your wheelhouse. You were fast at Phoenix and Bristol as well, so maybe some, some short oval uh, prowess and now on a road course. Is there anywhere you feel like you have to work on, or do you already feel like you're top of the series? I would say the only thing that I struggle with is plate racing. I'd, I'd say road course racing is probably my, my strong suit. Uh, certainly don't struggle with the intermediates either, but I know Richmond next week, that's going to be a struggle. I think it's Richmond next week anyway. It is. Um, yeah, it's uh, not one of my best tracks. So probably road courses and plate tracks are uh, going to be the two hiccups for me the rest of the year. I know we asked you about it earlier. And, well, frankly, talked about it a little bit with Vincent. It, reflecting back now, is there any other thought from that turn 12 incident? And he even elaborated a little bit. I don't want to soak the fire and create drama, but just hear about the drama. What happened there at the start of the race as well? <laughs> Yeah, I talked to Vinny briefly about it. Um, it. I honestly thought he was missing the corner. I took my normal braking point, which was obviously deeper than his. Uh, and I was I turned turned in where I normally turn in, and he obviously cut down. So, I mean, I'm sorry it happened. I, I do feel like it was a racing, just a racing thing. It's obviously not what I'm trying to do at that point of the race. Um, I was on the brakes as hard as I could to hold up. I, like I, said, I apologize, but... Just a racing deal from my standpoint. But she could have got back up there and raced me because he was probably the fastest car out here. Well, Brian, it's good to talk to you after a race win. And uh, certainly, I'd say top of the series right now with some close competition. I think that's a good way to put it. Car 78 back in victory lane. Celebrate. Uh, we won't be there at Richmond, but hopefully we're talking to you at Martinsville. Awesome. Thanks. Have a good one. Brian Smith, a race win here at Circuit of the Americas. Uh, definitely good to talk to driver 78. And, uh, you know, that incident between the 67 and 78 down in turn 12, Vincent might feel differently right now. Uh, but I have to say, to me at least, it looks like one of those things where they will absolutely make note of it. They will think about it for a while. Vincent might stew over it. But even as Brian goes down and talks to those drivers, I don't think that's going to be one that has some crazy big effect the rest of the season but somebody who is going to have an effect on the rest of the season finishes second tonight uh cody how did the rest of this race go it was tumultuous to say the least oh my god that was quite the battle there with uh nathan finnegan uh man i don't once i came out of pits and i was in front of him i knew it was on from there um it was just a great time out there today Absolutely similar, but different strategies uh, to, to finish this race in stage three. And it worked out beautifully. I think some of the best racing we've seen in a long time on a road course. That was great. And how do you then decompress from that and get ready to, to start focusing on, on what lies ahead next as, uh, well, most official series in oval racing are to be going to Richmond. And as such, so will we Richmond on Easter Sunday. How do you go from that great battle now to Richmond? Okay. I honestly don't even know how you do, really, because Richmond's just going to be a mess, like it always is. Same with Martinsville and all those other short tracks, but we'll do what we can to prepare during the week and take our best stuff. And I pulled up the points graphic and, and kind of theorized about where this might put you after this race. A big result, a lot of stage points, second place here uh, at the checkered flag. This is going to be a very significant result for you. You're down in 15th coming into today. It's been a very rough start, despite some big speed and big runs to start the day. This, though, is kind of the first race that's come together for you. How do you keep this going? Yeah, we're just going to keep going one race at a time, you know, just keep prepping during the week. And, uh, yeah, hopefully it all pans out, stay out of trouble, and bring our best stuff week in, week out. I see driver four as high as about 10th position of the point standings after today. Cody, congratulations. A really big day. And finally, a uh, day goes completely right, I guess. Well, not completely right, but 
you complete the race probably where you should or at least close to it congratulations uh i do hope i'm talking to you again soon yep thanks Cody Neal, a, a very, very big result and is going to take a whole lot of points out of this along with, um, I think, some big time positions in the point standings. Let's bring in driver number six, though, who finishes third place, Nathan Finnegan. We talked to him earlier, then we talked to one of his teammates at the stage two break. And uh, Nathan, some differing strategies there at the end, gave us one of the best road course fights I've seen in a long time. You come out on the losing side, but is it really a loss? Yeah, I mean, uh, all in all, we're we're definitely after the top five. Uh, after what we were seeing in practice, I honestly didn't think we had the pace for even the top five. So the pit strategy almost almost worked out. I uh, sat in the box probably for about a half a second to a second longer than I needed to, um, unfortunately. But all in all, a great run from us. And uh, hats off to the 78. He was just on fire all day. It was definitely his race to lose in terms of pace. And um, that pit issue ended up backing us up i think right into the four and then they kind of gave us that <laughs> i hope it put on a good show for you guys it seemed like it, it would have um he wasn't too too happy about the cornering on the end of the back stretch but gave more than enough room and felt i should give it back and um lessons learned i suppose for next time should have just kept the position but that's racing so definitely happy with the with the third place though yeah, you sound a bit dejected, and I guess you, you kind of led on to a little bit of it there with the four car. I would have thought, you know, you're talking about just trying to be in the top five at the end of the day. You finished third, a fantastic fight. Is it just that bit of maybe a little bit of disagreement that has you dejected? I, I would have thought maybe you'd be a little happier. Yeah, I think, um, yeah, he wasn't he wasn't too, too happy with the way we were racing him. And at the same time, we were running similar pace, and I mean if you had the opportunity to make the dive if we're a car length or so back you got to make it um especially that late in the run and uh yeah it's a little frustrating um i at this point in hindsight after reviewing it wish i just kept the spot but again that's racing and you know we're on to next week and again we're you know we're happy with the, with the top three we'll take the points for sure well congratulations nathan good to talk to you at the end of the race and for good reason as well relapse led third place uh, best of luck now richmond Thanks, Andrew. Appreciate you. A little bit of dejection there in his voice. Uh, I'm surprised to hear that, but at the same time, it makes a little bit of sense as well. Uh, really good racing. Fantastic day. I think everybody in the series should be proud of themselves. Um, really enjoyed that race. It, it got a little bit meat and potato-y, if you will. Um, a little bit dry there in the, the midsection to begin stage. Well, I shouldn't say to begin stage three. We got stage three going, had all the calamity, and then it calmed down to a lull. Then pit stops happened and it all came right back. It was a very short period of dryness. Great racing. That is what you want in a road course race, especially out of this next gen car, especially out of Circuit of the Americas. Everybody pat yourselves on the back. That was good stuff. Next up, though, we head out to Richmond as a series. We will not be live for Richmond. At least that's not the plan. That's Easter Sunday. It's going to be a little more difficult to orchestrate a broadcast for that, but we will see these guys again at Martinsville Speedway on April the 7th, right alongside the NASCAR Cup Series going there. And, well, right in between a couple of big Sarah races, the Sim Auto Racing Association Pierce Fleet Service Super Series. Say that five times fast. Uh, but Sarah is heading out to an unknown track on Thursday. Still don't know where in the world we're going. It could be a road course, a dirt track, who knows? Probably a short oval. Um, but regardless, could be anywhere still. Then the following Thursday, after we go to Martinsville here with the Icon Cup Series, it's out to New Hampshire for those guys. So kind of a preview, maybe, uh, of a track that we'll see later on in this Icon Cup Series schedule. But that is it for us here at Circo of the Americas. A fantastic race. It sounds like the, the most incidents per Cody Eldred. The most incidents by a single driver in today's race, 150. Second most, 110. Those are some big numbers. Track limits were, were turned, well, not turned off, but... Uh, Driver incidents were not penalized. There we go. That's the word I'm looking for. Uh, not penalized through the course of the day. A big shout out to our partners with the uh, with the channel. Whiplash Semicams, ATVO, and CC's Business. And that is it from Circuit of the Americas. We'll see you all next time at, well, not at Richmond, at Martinsville Speedway. Best of luck in our broadcast week off, everybody. Should be a lot of fun at Richmond, and we'll see you in April. A big shout-out as well to the groups at the bottom of your screen now in audio, ATVO, Whiplash, SimCams, OBS, and iRacing.com. Until next time, 
We don't know where we're going on Thursday, but be there with the Sarah Pierce Fleet Service Super Series. Otherwise, we'll see you guys April 7th, Martinsville Speedway at the Paperclip.